Hello everyone and welcome to the talk on meta classes. Recently I encountered a very fascinating concept with which is meta programming. And I would like to share my findings on this topic in this talk. I hope that it may be helpful to you to wrap your head around this concept because everyone say that it is tough to understand. It is one of the most complex yet interesting topic in Python that makes it an extremely powerful language. We are going to discuss some examples about meta classes and also why and when we should use them. Before I begin, I want to clarify that it is a complicated programming topic and unless the requirement can only be solved via meta programming, I would recommend that developer choose a different programming approach and only use meta classes if you absolutely have to use it. At first, the meta programming seems like a very funky thing, but if you have ever worked with decorators, you were doing meta programming there all along. Just like metadata is data about data, Meta programming is writing programs that manipulates programs. It is a common perception that meta programs are the program that generate other programs. But the paradigm is even broader. All of the programs designed to read, analyze, transform or modify themselves are example of meta programming. The term meta programming refers to the potential for of a program to have knowledge or manipulate itself. In a nutshell, we can say that meta programming is the code which manipulates code. We often use decorators to enhance the Python code and add extra functionality to the existing functions. These decorators are part of meta programming in Python. Code generators are used to introspect the functions, classes, types of an object and modify them at runtime. The IDs use meta programming feature to provide code analysis. Expert level Python developers who intend to implement frameworks and their own libraries in Python often use meta programming feature of Python. Before I begin, let's remember that everything is an object in Python. A function, a constant, variable, literally everything is an object. To elaborate, even a class is an object. As a result, we can treat a class as any other object and pass the class as a parameter, store it and modify it at the runtime. A class is an object that can be used to instantiate new objects. A class seen sorry, a class can be seen as a bucket that groups the object and defines the protocol or rules for the object in that that it creates. But the question is how to instantiate the class? I mean, if a class is also an object, just like any other object, it must be an instance of something, right? That is exactly the question that we will try to answer. Now that particular thing that is used to instantiate a class is called meta class. It groups a set of class together. We can have meta information about classes within a meta class. Um, this whole meta thing can be summarized as meta class creates classes and classes creates objects. For example, in Python, a special class type creates this class object. The type class is default meta class which is responsible for making classes. That is why in Python everything 
have some type associated with it because every type in python is defined by class unlike c++ or java where int character float are primary data types in python these are object of integer class or string class writing a custom meta class involves two steps first is write a subclass of the meta class type second is inserting a new meta class into the class creation process using the meta class hook we subclass the type class and modify the magic methods like init new prepare and call to modify the behavior of the classes while creating them these methods have information like base class name of the class attributes and their values as the class can add protocol rules to an object a meta class adds protocol rules to a class and python uses meta class to create a class for us so the first key note to remember is that everything is an object in python including a class and each class is created by a meta class the second key note to remember is that each class is an instance of the type type class before we move any further let's understand what type is the constructor of the type class is called to retrieve the type of an object that is in general approach now for example consider this code of function this method return the class python example but when i print type of get python example i get function because get python example belongs to the class function but when i print it differently it gives me different result this is because the return of get python example belongs to the class type so as i said the second key note to remember is that every class is an ob is an instance of the type type here type is a meta class this class is used to create other classes it defines the rules protocols of the classes it creates consider this class the class has a constructor that takes a block name and a method that returns the name of the block now we learn that constructor of the type can be used to create classes and can then create instances of the class so let's try to do that for that we need to see what are the parameters allowed in type the constructor of the type takes these parameters as you can see the dict parameter is where we pass in a dictionary with two keys where the keys are method names and the values are the implementation of the method now let's create python example type class by using the type constructor without declaring the class using the standard nomenclature this is equivalent to creating python example class ourselves that we have done in the first class section in both cases the creation of end object and output of the get method is same this is also the reason why we have a dict property in all of our objects so by using our custom meta class instead of type we can inject some behavior to the classes that won't have been possible so how do we do meta programming we can start by creating our own meta class the first step is to create a class that inherits from the type type 
the type will add additional behavior to the new meta class. A class can only have one meta class and cannot have two different meta classes just for the sake of conflict. The snippet of the code shown show that we have created a new meta class called PyCon meta. The key point to note is that a meta class is defined by inheriting the type. I'm repeating this again. We have to inherit type class to create any meta class. When we create a class, we can set the meta class attribute to a meta class that is inherited from type. The meta class will have new method that calls type dot underscore new method we can now add validation rule in the meta dot new and validate all of the parameters in the new class new is another example of meta programming it creates new class instance and it is not bound to an instance of the class in nature this method is called before init and we can override the superclass new method. The return of new method is the actual instance of the class. It is useful when we want to modify the creation of immutable data types such as tuple. Now we are going to modify the new method of PyCon meta class and check the class has method get block. Apologies for that. Yeah, so now I'm going to modify the new method of the PyCon meta class and check the class has method get block. Notice how setting the meta class attribute at class level is required. As a result, when I run this code, even before instantiating the PyCon example object, I will get this response. It shows that our code is broken as soon as the module is loaded. We haven't instantiated the object yet, but still it shows that our code is broken. Please notice how the exception is thrown even before I created the instance. This is how we can enforce every class to have certain methods attributes that our framework or library require. I can now create a new class PyCon example and have its meta class as PyCon meta and ensure PyCon example contain the get block method. Now as soon as I load the module, it will give me a proper answer and it will print out this. We can see that it printed a dictionary. This is because we have added print dict in statement in the PyCon meta class. We can use the new method and it is called whenever class is instantiated and it is always called before the init method. So all the validation and checks we can put in the new method. Meta class can be used to modify the class attributes. For example, now I am going to modify all of the methods so that they are all prefixed with my name Pratiba. The functionality of Pratiba get block will remain as the functionality of get block above. This is how we can add new methods to a class by a meta class. Even though actual method Pratiba get block doesn't explicitly exist in PyCon example class, but the meta class added it for us and a result. When I put the output of Pratibha get blog, same output is printed. The main use case of meta class are validation of new classes and adding dynamic code to new classes. Most of the time we don't we do not do this using meta classes. It is usually used for something complicated. But a few cases where we definitely use meta classes 
is what we are going to cover in next few slides. So there are a number of users of meta classes, including these mentioned. Meta classes propagate down the inheritance hierarchy. It will affect all the subclasses as well. So we can use it to apply a method decorator to all the subclasses which inherits the class. We suppose we want to check that a class was defined correctly. We can use meta classes. We can also use them to raise errors during module imports. We can add meta hook that are called before any other import is called. And there are certain settings that you can do which are part of sys.path processing. If we want every module of our framework to have methods with a particular signature or if we want to have our classes to have certain naming conventions and methods, we use metaprogramming. As I said, code generators use them for introspection of functions, classes, type of the object, modify them at the runtime, or code analysis in general. If, ever, if you want to run a specific code every time a base class is created, of course, meta class. And there are so many others, like we can extend Python syntax by creating our own domain specific language or abstract syntax trees. Object relational mapping classes traditionally use meta classes. And in short, developers who concentrate on writing frameworks often use meta classes. Because meta classes are inherited among some classes, they solve a practical problem of code redundancy, which is don't repeat yourself. Meta classes also help in abstracting complex logic of class creation, typically by performing extra actions or adding extra code while class objects are produced. A few real world use cases of meta classes are abstract base classes, registration of the classes, and creating APIs and libraries and framework. Let's see examples of each of them. Abstract base classes are the classes that are only meant to be inherited from and not to be instantiated. Python has the following, sorry, let's create, let's say we have this particular vehicle class. Now let's create a truck class inheriting from vehicle class. Note that we haven't implemented abstract methods. Let's see what happens if we instantiate an object of our truck class. We will get the error because we haven't instantiated any abstract method. And it is mandatory to do as per our abstract base class. We can fix this by defining both abstract methods in our truck class. And we will get the correct response as per the object creation. Registration of classes. To understand this, let's take an example of multiple file handlers at some server. The idea is to be able to find the right handler class quickly on the basis of file format. We will create a handler's dictionary and let our custom meta class register different handlers encountered in the code. Now based on this particular hierarchy or inheritance of classes, we can easily know which handler class to use based on the format of the file. Speaking generally, whenever you have to maintain some sort of data structure storing characteristics of classes, you can use meta classes. Now, application programming interface, that is APIs. Meta classes are extensively used in frameworks and libraries because of their ability to prevent redundancy of logic 
among subclasses they have ability to hide custom class creation logic that user need not to know this presents interesting opportunities to reduce boilerplate code and of course reduce the maintenance of that and it will give a better and much nicer api for example consider this snippet usage of django orm here we create a vehicle sorry yeah here we create a vehicle class inheriting from the models model class in django package inside the class we define a couple of fields which is colors and wheels to represent characteristic of a vehicle now let's try to instantiate an object of the class we just created as a user creating a model for a vehicle we just had to inherit from the model class and write some high level statements the rest of the work like creating a hook of the database raising an error for invalid invalid values returning an integer type instead of models integer was done behind the scenes by the models class and the meta class used by it so far we learned to implement our custom meta classes by subclassing the default type meta class of python we also saw some real world use case of meta classes before concluding the talk let's take a quick look at most common way of meta programming in python that is decorators decorators are a way to modify a function and its response the usage of decorators appears somewhat like this at the rate some decorator is just the synthetic sugar to represent that some function is wrapped by another function some decorator we know that functions as well as classes excluding the type meta class are objects in python which means they can be assigned to a variable copied or passed as parameter to other functions the previous synthetic is equ effectively equivalent to some function equal to some decorator calling passing some function as parameter the basic wrapper function or the some decorator function looks like this it has a wrapper function that does something after the function is called and it returns a wrapper let's take an example and see how it works so in other words a decorator is a way of adding new functionality to an existing function without modifying its original structure for example we have these two functions now we need to print the function name and parameter values when the function gets called this should be applicable to both functions the native way is to add print log statement to them but it sounds like very repetitive work and we also need to modify each function body now when we think that if we can do it better we get the answer in python yes we can we can achieve this by writing a decorator function and by not modifying any of the existing functions body in the above code snippet my decorator is a decorator function and we decorate all two all the functions with my decorator and we have not touched the existing functions body to add this print functionality so basically decorators are high order functions that take a function as an argument and returns another function here my decorator takes a function as an argument and return wrapper function as a result where wrapper function adds our print functionality to the function there is more to decorators 
but this is a brief introduction to decorators and how we use them in python you can use decorators at many levels and if you have worked in django extensively you will see or you will notice that if you are not using the class based view and directly using the functions you do use wrappers or decorators that will make sure that your user is authenticated that is another way of using meta programming in python as tim peter suggest meta classes can easily veer into the realm of being a solution in search of a problem it is not typically necessary to create custom meta classes if the problem at hand can be solved in a simpler way it probably should be solved in a simpler way still it is beneficial to understand meta classes so that you understand python classes in general and you can recognize when a meta class really is the appropriate tool to use this slide provides some useful links and some links under some samples those links i have used directly to get the code snippets because they were very well structured and creating another code snippet will be uh define the rule of don't repeat yourself the question of whether to use meta class is a highly debated online but it should now be much easier for you to analyze and answer if some problem is better solved using meta programming or you can solve it some other way which is easier to maintain and understand for other person who will maintain your code in future I hope this talk have been helpful to you and you may have got a basic understanding of meta class in python I also hope that you, you will use meta programming in your personal projects to reduce the boilerplate code Have a great day ahead thank you so much for attending this talk Okay it's on now So up to you now Ma mm. Okay, hello okay. folks. Um, we're gonna go uh, to our Q and A session uh, for the talk by Pratibha Jignari on the topic of um, meta classes, the realm of meta program. And with her uh, today, we have uh, Pratibha joining us also uh, to answer uh, questions uh, concerning her talk. So we would like to welcome Pratibha. Thank you for joining us. Uh, all the way Thank from you. Poland today. So we'll see from uh, if we have any attendees that has any questions. So you can just type on the live chat. Uh, Maybe I can ask my question. Right. Okay. So Francis. So let's go on with uh, your question first. Yeah. Okay. So from looking at your talk, uh, I. I I came up with the impression that you imply that to have a meta class, you need to derive it from type. And uh, I was wondering, I, I've, I've had a use, a use case where I was using introspection. So I had classes that I didn't derive from type, but were using introspection to modify the behavior of the subclasses. So you could not use a class itself by itself. You had to use two subclasses and stuff like that. I will take a, a simple example to, to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. Is that if you had, I had an event driven uh, system and you needed to ha handle various events that you did not know what it, gonna, what it was going to be. So I had a, a naming system that says handle underbar event underbar something. And then the, meta, the, 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 the class that I defined would actually introspect the object and then, or, or the class, and then get to uh, saying, okay, now I have this event, I can handle it. I was wondering, do you consider that a meta class or not? Um, so this is the class that you have written for yourself and uh, to handle the events which are unforeseen, which is something that you cannot 
understand beforehand that says or you want to handle the situation where a system is behaving in a certain way that you have not predicted before right so in Don't both that. Yeah. yeah so yes you can have that but first thing even if you don't mention that it is derived from the type python is ex in implicitly going to derive it from the type class so that is something that whether you want to mention or not it's like up to us but when it comes to um, meta class on your own yes it is more like a first entry point for every event and then it will you know get processed accordingly so you can consider that as a meta class, but it is it will be more like your own custom class, which is going to handle the sub cases of your, um, you know, the hierarchy only. So yeah, it's up to you. Again, when you, if you're going to use meta class, the most, the best usage of that will be how a certain thing happening at the lower level of the hierarchy, how you want to modify that, how you want to handle that. So in your case, let's say that at the leaf node, whatever class is there, it is getting a error. So you will have a inbuilt mechanism at the parent class at the highest top, which will say that, okay, if there is some unexpected, unforeseen thing has happened, do X, Y, Z things. These are the steps. And it will be common for all the subclasses unless it is overridden at the child class. Yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. I just was uh, turning on my microphone. <laughs> I see. I have uh, some questions on my one too. Um, I went through the talk and at the end, uh, you, you mentioned, you quoted um that meta programming i mean meta classes meta programming 99% of us we do not have to care about this and most probably if we think this is something that we might need it also doesn't apply so if you need it you'll need it you'll know you need it and um i I've, I've been doing some python programming of my own since uh, version 1.52 and I have to admit, I have never thought of meta programming before. I mean, the, the meta classes, how it works under the hood. So my question is, um, what prompted you to study um, how does it work under the hood meta programming and then make it into talk? Was there something that prompted you for, for this? Or is it just you were just interested in it? So actually, it took me around three years to come up with this talk, to be honest. Um, I was working in Symantec as a software engineer, and at that time we had to create a library wrapper. That's when I encountered meta classes because we were exploring between whether we should go with the singleton or the, you know, any other design pattern, or, you know, let's just see that if meta classes can help us. That's the first time in my 10 years of career I have explored meta classes. So, but that was that took me a lot of time to actually understand how this meta class worked, and that's why I decided to give a talk on that just to have a short video out there so that anybody who's starting it will have a very basic example and in a very layman term explaining what meta classes and how the decorators actually work. So that's why I thought that this talk will can be a good point. Thank you very much because your the work that you've done for three years was summarized beautifully. I think I could understand it well, uh, quite easily, uh, with even my limited Python knowledge from the video. Thank you. Really Actually, helpful. yeah, because Meta class is a very uh, global. It's a concept. It's not a programming language specific thing. So understanding of meta programming can help you in any domain or any um, language python was just my tool to explain you what it is in my work i do write things uh, using django uh, the frame framework and 
it makes more sense now understanding how I mean how meta programming works because I think you also know that Django uses a lot of of this concept behind the hood. Uh, you just follow certain ways to write classes, and then things just magically happen. Yeah. Uh, we should say that uh, we are blessed with ORM layer provided by Django, which makes our life much easier. You also mentioned that it's a concept which is well not specific to to Python. So I was also wondering, um, what are the programming languages that you can pull examples from uh, that might be interesting to us? Uh, that you see the same same concepts you may apply. Is there anything else that you can show us? Um, so I have not specifically worked on it, but I think Node.js have meta programming to some extent, and um, I believe Java should have it. But I cannot pull any examples because I've not worked on them. But when I was, you know, researching this, uh, those were the primary examples back then. Then they were saying that okay, this is the way Java can help you mm. or no just can help you but yeah mm. i will believe java will have something similar to mm. i don't know for sure but kind of smells like it yeah because it's typical uh, uh oops oriented language so it should have it <laughs> yeah do we have any questions from the audience so we have uh um... You can raise your hands or you can just type in the chat if you are watching the live Q&A and have any questions. Francois, do you have anything else you would like to ask Pratiba? Uh, no, I have asked a question. Um, I have no, no, right now, no other questions. <laughs> well, I have to admit the topic is pretty, pretty wild, mind-blowing. I mean, it's pretty deep. So, like you just mentioned, it's now 99% of us don't have anything to do with meta programming. So, I, I believe um, uh, for any of us who played around or you work with Python, they kind of like have heard about it before, but wouldn't know exactly what and how it works, right? Yeah, I think majority of us, the maximum, uh, you know, the most acquaintance we have been with meta programming is through decorators. I don't think meta classes is something that we have explored. I, I haven't seen singleton as well much. So meta program, meta classes are way above that. So if you have seen singleton somewhere, you can think that maybe, you know, it has singleton, it has decorators, maybe meta programming can help in the, if it is very really widely spread it in the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. In your opinion, in your opinion do you think uh, decorators um, are helpful? I mean, some people call it like syn syntax sugar. I guess, but you can actually do the same thing by writing it all out, right? So, do you have any opinions on this? Mm, to be honest, uh, like you said that you have worked with Django, and uh, you might have noticed that if you're not using class-based views, uh, you have functions which has decorators to make sure that a user is authenticated. So, even if it is sugar-coated, well, I think that sugar is healthy for our pro coding. And that is a very good analogy. So even if it's sugar coated, it's good for healthy for our coding. Uh, okay. So there um, is a question in the Q and A uh, section of the, uh, of the not the chat, but the Q and A section. Uh, okay. So I will I will ask this. Oh, now we have we have two questions. So I'll ask the first one. Um, so Pratiba, what, what's your favorite resource to get started with with it that you would recommend? Um, does it have to be Python specific? When it comes to meta classes, it's a whole, uh, you know, it's a whole topic in itself, but you have to start with 
choose your favorite programming language. It, it doesn't have to be Python. It can be any language that you want. And if it suppose if, if it support meta programming, then you should you know you should be able to explore meta programming using the actual code. Because for me, it's always uh, helpful to have a use case handy to understand it better. So whenever it comes to concept, you can read it. Like we know that 99% of people don't know about it. But if you just read the theory and you don't have any practical example, you will, you know, it will vein out of your memory. But if you start with something which have the which you tells you the application of that concept and explain you that concept by applying in the language of pure understanding, it stays with you and it helps you better to understand that. Okay. Um, right, right. So it, pick any tutorial, anything which will explain it in your understandable language. Which kind of like relates uh, slightly to the next question. So having examples um, actually helps you to understand, uh, you know, the, the concept, right? So the next question is um, from Dylan. What is the most weird or wild examples of meta classes that you have found in the wild? Uh, in, in your all the time you'll be working with Python or not Python? Um, that's an interesting question. I have to think about it because I haven't explored meta programming too much. As I said that I have encountered meta programming once when I had to actually think about using it and um, after that, I was uh, I have exploded when I was preparing for the stock. But I think the wildest example that I had was of a system that was mentioned by Francis. It was an event-driven system because it was scanner-based in Python, and um, it was basically previously written with the standard classes and using singleton and to control all the subclasses. But later on, uh, when we noticed that it is not scalable and it is not accommodating more, <coughs> sorry, more uh, subclasses, uh, more functionality in the inherited classes, then they decided it to move to meta classes and explore that and it really helped in uh, making the whole code more structured, honestly. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I have noticed as a spectacle, not actually working in that code, but uh, I have reviewed the codes and uh, that's the most wild one. When, when mm -hmm. I noticed that, okay, meta classes can actually help people, especially when people are writing the libraries. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. Yes, I think we're out yes, of time, yes. Out of time. So uh, just to give uh, one final, um, anything that you want to pass on, Pratibha, to people who's currently watching or anyone else who uh, will be watching this video later on? So is, is there anything that, you know, you want to talk about meta classes or anything that you want to pass on to our audience? Um, I would say that meta classes is a very, uh, remote topic not everybody can be interested in but if you are planning to write your own library even if it's a small one i will suggest you to think about um, using meta classes first instead of decorators because once your library become public and by god's grace if it have a lot of followers and it is getting used wildly then you have to keep on adding functionalities so having meta classes in place can really help you. Thank you very much, Pratiba, uh, for your time and for the talk.